It is difficult for me as a civilised person to come to terms with just how depraved cyclists are. Do you know, under here, I'm not wearing anything. I'm basically wandering around in my underpants. So next time you see someone, sit down next to you in your favourite cafe, they have a coffee and they've been sweating for several hours and perspiring all over the place. Think about their personal hygiene and how cyclists really need to up their game because it's simply disgusting. Okay, quick update. I'm uh, now out of uh, Carcassonne and on the banks of the um, the Canal du Midi again. Um, I have a slight fashion problem. This was uh, tightly fitting about 10 kilograms ago when I um, first got them and uh, now I'm no longer getting offers to go work for Willy Wonka in his chocolate factory as an Oompa Loompa. Um, not sure what I'm going to do about this. I'm not able to eat enough to uh, keep this looking packed, so we'll just have to wear it looking a bit loose fitting. A few upgrades on the bike today. Um, stopped in at Decathlon, got a front sack, which is quite handy for little bits of emergency food. And just here, you can see my new inflatable um, air mattress, which hopefully will give me a bit more comfort at night. And they even fixed, they even fixed my front light here, which is sitting nice and pretty. They did all that for free. Nice people at Decathlon. Um, not going to travel too far today. I'm heading towards Toulouse. That's another 100 kilometres away, but um, I've already travelled about 15 kilometres and I think I'll do another 50 or so for an easy ride into uh, Toulouse tomorrow. Well, it's a pretty hot afternoon. Uh, much warmer than the 22 degrees that was forecast. And I've just taken shelter under a tree. Good things, trees. Uh, I was also keen to um, relieve myself slightly, but there is a canal boat coming up the canal, so that will have to wait. I've been shopping, and my drink bottles down here are now full. And I've got some goodies in my sack here. I've got licorice, which Dutch people love in case I meet a Dutch person want to bribe them. Peanuts. There's some chocolate in there. And some local pastis. That's apart from uh, the ingredients for the meal I'm making tonight, which I now can make since I've been to Decathlon and I've got the proper cartridge. They're generally pretty friendly, the people on the river. Just wave at them. Here we go. Civilised people, the river folk. Well, I have stopped again. Uh, it's still very hot over there. You can see a little fellow who's smart enough to be in the shade. I have stopped for an ice cream. I don't often eat ice creams, but this one is a sorbet citron de framboise, lemon and strawberry. And I've also got a pain. Du vrai pain de la boulangerie which will go nicely with 
the meal for tonight as long as I can get the cooker going. Um, I should note that um, some of my friends are quite competitive people. Um, it doesn't matter how often they lose, uh, they like to challenge me as the world's greatest living adventurer. Doesn't matter how long I've been the world champion, they still want to have a go. Uh, like this guy, for example. It's a I am coming for your yellow jersey, Hamish. <laughs> All I want to say to you, Matt, is that if you want to have a go, bring it. The yellow jersey is mine, and you won't get it. This here is the Canard de l'Ocean. It is the highest lock on the Canard du Midi, the highest point. 48 locks down to uh, where I started. 15 more locks further down from here. This is the summit down to Toulouse where it meets the mighty Garonne. It's after seven o'clock now and uh, I'm thinking I should find somewhere for the night. It's not too far to uh, Toulouse tomorrow so um, hopefully I'll find somewhere suitable and peaceful soon. Well, it's taken a lot longer than I expected, but 10 kilometers later, I have found a camping spot right on the banks of uh, the canal. Uh, it took so much longer because for the last 10 kilometers, uh, the canal has been following a major motorway. It's still about 500 meters over that way, but um, because of some good tree lines it's mostly pretty quiet and when I stop talking um, you can even hear some bird song. Uh, I'm going to quickly set up camp and then start on dinner. This is going to be a revolutionary thing and as we all know the French love revolutions. The sound of camp cooking as you can see, I have put it some distance from the tent. This is real camping. We open this. I have made coco vin. Chicken, red wine, carrots, potatoes, mushrooms, touch of armagnac, uh, flour, garlic. Did I say onions? They're all in there. This is going to be an epic meal. This is my first time making coco vin at a campsite. I'm quite partial to a bit of vin, less of the cook. Um, and it makes it a whole lot easier, of course, if all the ingredients come out of a can. And just like that, dinner is ready. Mm. Mm. Could do with a little salt, but I don't have any. So just having a pause on the side, uh, new day, Sunday morning. Um, I've got about two hours left to get to Toulouse, um, <clears throat> 34 kilometers. Uh, just making my way along the canal. Um, gonna treat myself to a night in a hotel tonight in Toulouse. Uh, we'll check the weather forecast and decide if I'm going to um, stay a second night and take a rest day. Um, cycled about oh, 85 kilometers yesterday um, to see, see how I feel uh, this evening. Um, but I might even be able to break my routine if I get there early enough and do a bit of a wander 
around the city. And I've made it to Toulouse, this uh, distinctive red brick terracotta in Toulouse is, um, came about after the great fire of Toulouse in 1463 when um, they decided that uh, brick was more likely to last um, the fire like the great fire of London also brought about an end to the plague it's a public holiday here at the moment uh, but still a lot of people here in uh, France's fourth largest city uh, and this is the um, the mighty Grand Square. Uh, Toulouse is um, more than 2,000 years old. Um, originated in the Iron Age, but the Romans occupied this place, and it's been the second city of France for much of its history after Paris. see a lot of people just um, mulling about, having something to eat and enjoying themselves. There's a Crown Plaza Hotel there and a Hotel de l'Opera, uh, but um, I'm not staying at either of those places. But I am standing in front of the Capitolium, which is Quite a grand civic building. And just beside me is the site of the Couvent des Jacobins. It was built in uh, 1229, that's when it was started, uh, just after the end of the um, Albigensian Crusade, which was intended to eliminate the uh, Qatars. Uh, uh, an unusual sect that believed in all sorts of strange things from southern France. It's, um, it's one of the early sites of the Dominican order that St Dominic, who started the order here in Toulouse, uh, began um, and it houses the remains of uh, Thomas Aquinas. Um, one of the many great religious pieces of Toulouse. But Toulouse is not just about high art and culture and religion, uh, education, technology. It's the site of the French aerospace industry. Toulouse is the largest aerospace city in Europe. Um, it's also a place where you can stop and grab some bread. I'm going to do that just now before I decide what I'm going to do for the night. <laughs>